Hey everybody, thanks for coming to Dance With Me. I'm Laura, and today we're gonna be covering a non-comprehensive collection of vernacular jazz vocabulary moves. We'll also be covering that age-old question, do they begin on eight or one? San Antonio, the plants are back inside. It's fantastic. Anyway, so solo dancing, the ability to dance by yourself is a very important part of being a Lindy Hopper, and vernacular jazz moves are very important parts of solo dancing. But if you're a beginner, knowing all of those different moves and knowing if they begin on count eight and if they begin on count one can be a whole lot and can be very intimidating. If you're a more experienced jazz dancer, seeing somebody do a move on the one when it should be on the eight, like a clap or a stomp or something like that, can be like nails on a chalkboard. And if you're new, you're probably very aware that there's a right way and a wrong way to do things, and that can be scary. First off, there's not a right and a wrong way to do things. However, there are some general rules and traditions that apply to vernacular jazz. You can break those rules, but only after you know what those rules are and after they're in your body. Big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for helping to make this video free for people like you. If you want to help them, the link is in the description. So this video is not gonna cover everything and independent study is a big part of your job as a dancer. However, hopefully this can be a general guide and something that will help you out as you try to navigate all of these differences. General gists, not a catch-all. So this is my issue with deciding if a move starts on eight or a move starts on one, is moves can kind of navigate. They can bleed over the eight, over the phrase. So eight and one is really limited. Think about it more as moves that emphasize evens and moves that emphasize odds. So before we get into specific moves, it's important that we all understand a rhythmic fundamental of swing era jazz, and that is you snap or you clap on the two and the four of the music. Ba-dum, ba-dum, dum, ba-dum, da-dum, dum, ba-dum, ba-dum, dum, ba-dum, ba-dum, dum. Contrast that with ba-dum, ba-dum, dum, ba-dum, ba-dum, dum, ba-dum, ba-dum, bum, ba-dum, ba-dum, bum. It's a very different feel. That two and the four is part of what makes swing swing. It's part of what makes it feel relaxed. And so the reason why a lot of these moves have a right and a wrong is because of how that move emphasizes that two and four in the music. So now that we understand that, let's get to our first group of moves, which in my opinion are the hardest rules to break, and that is the noisy moves, moves that snap, clap, knee slap, stomp off, things like that. Obviously, because of what we just talked about, you want those noises to be on the even beats. And if they're on the odd beats, that can be a little bit jarring. Here's a list of a bunch of them. Feel free to follow along. are moves that begin with a kickball change. Now this can be tricky because kickball changes don't have to be on the even beats and you can put a kickball change on the top of a bunch of different moves. But if the move traditionally begins with a kickball change, it's generally on an even beat.
our last group of moves that start on the evens, I couldn't think of a nice tidy rule for them, but the emphasis is on the evens, so they're typically done on the evens. <laughs> that start on the one or emphasize odd beats. First group is gonna be the Charleston basic or its derivatives. Things like kick steps, crossovers, any prominent kick like that is gonna be on an odd beat. <laughs> step on every other beat. At least that's my tidy little rule that does not apply to everything. These moves typically start on the odds, but in my opinion, they're the easiest rule to break. You can shift these moves over to the even to get a different flair if you do it with knowledge and conviction. <laughs> onto an even beat on purpose to see how they feel. Wait a minute. So 
some of those are more than every other beat. It's true, but the emphasis is every other beat. So they still fall in that category. For example, the Alan Leon triple steps. A triple step is a gradual weight shift that takes the place of two beats. Triple step, one, two, kick, step hold, step, that kind of thing. So even though there are a lot of steps, it has a very slow feel. So for me that mm -mm, triple step still has that every other beat kind of feel. Also, I mean, these are arbitrary rules that I'm making up to help make sense of all of this. Next up, we have moves that I could not make a tidy little rule for. Some are just feeling it moves. <laughs> sure what the beginning of the move is. Like, is that a prep or is that a part of the move? so don't put each move on a stone tablet. It's important to put emphasis, like snaps and claps, on the right beats, but dance moves were getting invented all the time, so they bled into each other a lot. So for example, if you take a boogie forward and you change the styling a little, maybe you get something that looks a little bit like a Shorty George. And if you take a Shorty George and you move it sideways, you have something that looks like a camel walk. If you move kick steps forward and backward, well, that's a lot like a Charleston basic. If you take that basic and emphasize the kicks on the evens instead of the steps on the odds, well, that turns into Squat Charleston really easily. If you double up the Squat Charleston on one leg, well, that feels a lot like windmills. Also, check out Boogie Forward and Drunken Sailors and then Boogie Back and Fishtails. <laughs> basically the same move. They're just stylized differently and there's a different conception of which step the beginning of the move is. Everything is very messy. It's art. Now, if you're new, it can be difficult to hear where the eight in the music is. A lot of the music in the popular culture now emphasizes the one. So moves that begin on the eight can sometimes get dragged onto the one. So you're stomping and clapping on the odds and then people who have more experience with jazz dancing are like, no! The distinction is important, but don't sweat it. Just keep dancing and paying attention. You will do it wrong, but everybody does it wrong when they're learning. Just have faith in yourself and keep going. If you're having trouble physically making up the time difference between moves that start on evens and moves that start on odds, I have a video in it. It's linked in the description. Speaking of the description, do you like the music? Description. Do you want merch? Description. Do you want to see which organizations that support African diasporic art forms and artists I'm giving half of my YouTube's earnings to? Description. If you had fun and learned something, like and subscribe, and the best way to learn how to dance is to dance.